And news just out, Stellantis is laying off almost 2,500 factory workers from an assembly plant outside of Detroit. Jeep can't sell their cars anymore. Nobody wants them. So now Jeep is practically giving away its vehicles for next to nothing. This desperate strategy highlights the brand's struggles and raises questions about its long-term viability. As Jeep attempts to regain traction, the question remains, will these drastic measures entice consumers back to the dealership or simply add to their challenges? But how did we get here in the first place? What exactly happened to Jeep? Is this the end or the start? Remember when Jeep was your go-to for adventure without breaking the bank? For years, Jeep nailed it by offering rugged, reliable vehicles that everyone could afford. This smart pricing built a loyal tribe of fans who loved that Jeep didn't just promise excitement, it delivered it without emptying your wallet. But lately, things have taken a wild turn. Imagine waking up to find your favorite Jeep model skyrocketing from under $40,000 in 2020 to over $54,000 in 2023. That's not just a bump, it's a steep climb that's leaving potential buyers scratching their heads. While competitors are rolling out wallet-friendly options, Jeep's hefty price hikes are making loyal fans Fans feel like they're hitting a brick wall. Suddenly, what was once an easy choice feels like a pricey gamble, pushing longtime supporters to reconsider their allegiance. And here's where things get even more intriguing. In an effort to shift Jeep's image and branch into the luxury market, Stellantis decided to introduce high-end models like the Grand Wagoneer. But contrary to what one might expect, this move has been met with mixed reactions. Instead of solidifying Jeep as a sophisticated luxury contender, it's created confusion among consumers. Many people still associate Jeep with rugged exploration rather than high-end living, which has muddied the waters quite a bit. With vehicles now sporting premium price tags, customers are often left questioning if they are making a valid investment in a car that meets their adventurous needs, or simply shelling out cash for a luxury badge that seems a far cry from the brand's storied past. An industry analyst put it like this, This misalignment has not only confused customers, but also pushed many away from considering Jeep all together. This underscores the real challenge Jeep faces, remaining true to its roots while also trying to elevate its brand image. And they have got a lot to work on. I am talking about issues that people have been asking Jeep to fix for, and what did we get? Disappointment to the least. So let's break it down. And while I do that, subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on videos like this. Quality concerns and reliability issues. The iconic brand has been in hot water with a slew of recalls and investigations that have raised some serious eyebrows about how dependable their vehicles truly are. One eye-catching case is the ongoing inquiry by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, which is looking into more than 94,000 Jeep Wrangler 4XE hybrid SUVs produced from 2021 to 2024. This investigation stems from 68 alarming reports of loss of motive power, which can be downright dangerous when you're trying to to drive. That's not all. Back in 2022, a recall hit 63,000 vehicles over similar engine shutdown troubles, pointing to a concerning pattern that suggests unresolved issues are creeping into Jeep's lineup. But just when you think it couldn't get more troubling, November 2023 brought another wave of concern. Over 32,000 hybrid Jeep Wranglers were recalled because they potentially posed a fire risk. Yes, you read that right. There were reports of eight instances where vehicles caught fire while parked or turned off, including including six fires occurring during charging sessions. It's these kinds of serious safety concerns that not only endanger lives, but also cast a shadow over Jeep's reputation for quality. The findings from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration hint that engine failure complaints are not just isolated incidents. They're part of a wider issue affecting multiple models, complicating Jeep's reliability narrative even further. Now, let's talk about the fallout from all these unsettling developments. The cumulative impact of these recalls and ongoing investigations has taken a significant toll on consumer trust in the Jeep brand. Picture this. Current and potential Jeep owners are understandably rattled by reports of Wranglers catching fire while parked. It raises vital questions about the safety of their vehicles and creates a climate of anxiety. No one wants to invest their hard-earned money into a vehicle that feels risky, right? As these quality and safety issues continue to pile up, they threaten to chip away at Jeep's long-standing image of ruggedness and reliability, traits that 
that have traditionally lured customers in. You can see the worrying signs reflected in declining sales numbers. As Jeep finds it tougher to compete in a crowded marketplace, potential buyers are looking at other brands that seem more dependable. This shift isn't just a momentary hiccup, it could jeopardize Jeep's long-term standing as a trusted name in the automotive arena. Strategic failure and instability. At Jeep, the frequent turnover in leadership has created an atmosphere of instability within the organization. Key figures like Jim Morrison, who once led the brand, and Mark Allen, the chief designer, have jumped ship in recent years. The constant shifting of leadership isn't just a behind-the-scenes drama. It ends up disrupting ongoing projects and creates a lack of cohesive vision for where the brand is heading. Each time a new executive steps in, they bring their own set of priorities and strategies, leading to confusion among both employees and customers about Jeep's true direction. So, while Jeep struggles to hold its ground, its ability to effectively respond to market demands and cater to consumer preferences is weakened. Even more, making it tough to turn around the troubling trend of declining sales. With all these shakeups in leadership, you can bet that a consistent brand strategy is hard to come by. When there's no unified vision guiding the way, Jeep finds itself battling with a fragmented approach to its mission and messaging. It's like navigating a ship without a captain. Employees often feel uncertain about the company's goals, which leads to frustration and confusion. Meanwhile, customers are left scratching their heads, bewildered by the shifting priorities and product lines. This inconsistency means Jeep misses out on prime opportunities to capture market share, especially as competitors are coming out swinging with innovative models that truly resonate with consumers. As a result, Jeep's identity has started to blur, pushing away loyal customers while also turning potential new buyers into skeptics. Let's talk about some of the moves that have raised eyebrows among Jeep enthusiasts. The decision to pull the plug on well-loved models like the Renegade and Cherokee has significantly narrowed Jeep's market coverage. Remember the Renegade? It was once a favorite in Jeep's lineup, particularly for those looking for an entry-level vehicle. So lots of fans were caught off guard by this decision, as many appreciated the Renegade for making the Jeep brand accessible to a wider audience. The Cherokee met a similar fate. Discontinuing this model has created a gap in the compact SUV market, where it used to thrive. By scrapping these models, Jeep might inadvertently be alienating a customer base that cherished their unique features and capabilities, which could narrow the brand's appeal in an increasingly competitive arena. If things couldn't seem worse, Stellantis' overarching strategy has led to an unwanted surplus of Jeep vehicles sitting on dealership lots. This excess inventory is like a double whammy for Jeep. Dealerships often have to resort to heavy discounts and promotions just to move stock off the floors. While it may sound enticing to get a great deal, it creates financial strain for everyone involved, from dealers to manufacturers. Plus, those price cuts don't just help move cars, they can seriously erode brand value and profitability. So when Jeep struggles to bounce back from this predicament, it raises questions about its future. With inventory levels staying high and sales stagnating, there's skyrocketing pressure on Stellantis to rethink how it approaches production. And that's exactly what they did. Let me explain. The Electric Gamble See, Stellantis is turning heads in the electric vehicle game with a hefty investment of over $406 million targeted at three plants in Michigan. This isn't just pocket change, it's part of their ambitious Dare Forward 2030 plan. This game plan outlines their goal to transition to a more sustainable future, aiming for a remarkable 50% of their US sales to be electric vehicles by 2030. And they aren't stopping there. They also want to make sure that by the same year, 2030 of their sales in Europe consist entirely of electric vehicles. That's a big commitment, right? With this investment, the Sterling Heights assembly plant is gearing up to roll out the Ram 1500 RF, which is Stellantis's very first fully electric vehicle built right here in the US. But wait, there's more. The Warren Truck Assembly Plant is also in on the action, preparing to manufacture an electrified Jeep Wagoneer. This isn't just any Jeep, it's one of four planned electric models that the brand aims to launch globally by 2025. These upgrades are not only enhancing production capabilities, but also demonstrating Stellantis' commitment to reducing its carbon footprint. They're embracing a multi-energy strategy to cater to various electrification scenarios. It's a bold move toward a greener future 
future. Now, before we start celebrating, let's talk about some of the hurdles Stellantis faces as it dives into the electric vehicle world. One of the biggest challenges? Achieving cost parity with those gasoline-powered vehicles. Why does that matter? Well, establishing competitive pricing is crucial for getting more consumers to hop on the EV train. As it stands, the production costs for electric vehicles are still pretty steep, making it hard for Stellantis to offer appealing prices without eating into profit margins. But there's more to it. Stellantis is also juggling the tricky task of maintaining its brand identity while shifting focus from traditional engines to electrification. Plus, there's a looming worry about job security. With the auto industry evolving so rapidly, workers are anxious about how increased automation and changes in production focus might impact their jobs. The atmosphere around Stellantis employees is charged with anxiety, especially with recent announcements about layoffs, particularly at the Sterling Heights assembly plant, which is feeling the impact of older models being phased out. This isn't just a minor concern, it's causing significant worry about job security among workers. The transition to electric vehicles also includes buyout offers as the company seeks to streamline operations in response to shifting production focuses. So what does this uncertainty mean for employees? Many are left feeling uneasy about their futures and worried that the new electrified models might not generate enough demand to keep everyone employed. Union leaders are sounding the alarm expressing concerns that without a strong lineup of electric models, job stability could take another hit. That's a tough spot for any worker. The EV Price Ward current landscape of the electric vehicle market is nothing short of a battleground, and it's causing quite a stir for Stellantis, particularly with its iconic Jeep brand leading the charge into this electrified era. As this dynamic automotive industry pivots rapidly toward electrification, the competition is heating up, and automakers are not holding back. They are aggressively slashing vehicle prices in an attempt to snag a bigger slice of the market pie. With Stellantis being known for its versatile lineup that includes everything from rugged trucks to stylish SUVs, it's no surprise that the Jeep brand, famous for its adventurous spirit, is having to grapple with a mix of exciting opportunities and daunting challenges. The recent influx of diverse electric vehicle options from competitors is shaking things up. Jeep now faces significant hurdles as it tries to maintain its hard-earned image and serve its loyal customers, all while keeping pace with the broader industry transition toward more sustainable options. With rivals like Tesla, Ford, and General Motors rushing onto the scene with enticing offers, discount initiatives, and attractive incentives, Jeep finds itself navigating a competitive landscape that demands agility and innovation to keep up. And the sharp uptick in average vehicle transaction prices is something that can't be ignored. Jeep's price points have shot up noticeably, resulting in its models now sitting at a premium compared to other players in the market. The average cost for a new Jeep has jumped to a staggering $54,000, prompting both longtime enthusiasts and potential new buyers to pause and question the feasibility of making such a hefty investment. This financial reality poses a significant risk. Could it alienate the very customer base that once treasured Jeep for its accessibility and spirit of adventure? As still Atlantis moves forward, it is understandably cautious about launching into a price-cutting frenzy. The stakeholders are fully aware that drastic reductions in pricing can jeopardize long-term profitability and erode the brand's value over time. Jeep has built its legacy on a rugged image and rich history, and making sweeping price cuts could ultimately undermine what the brand stands for. Instead, Stellantis seems dedicated to adopting a more strategic approach, one that balances competitive pricing with maintaining the brand's integrity. This includes heavy investment investments in the development and manufacturing of electric vehicles, while preserving Jeep's unique value proposition, which beautifully marries practicality with a sense of adventure and reasonable cost. On top of that, external economic pressures, like rising costs of materials and logistical headaches, only add to the complexity of the situation. Jeep's commitment to sustainability and expansion into the electrification space entails hefty upfront costs for developing new EV models. If Stellantis opts for substantial price cuts, they they may risk sacrificing crucial profit margins that are vital for funding future innovations. But Stellantis is making a concerted effort to navigate this challenging, price-sensitive terrain while remaining true to the adventurous essence of the Jeep brand. The coming years promise to be incredibly pivotal for Jeep as it endeavors to uphold its cherished legacy while simultaneously embracing the opportunities and challenges that the electric future has in store. But what about the people, the workers? The connection between Stellantis and the United Auto Workers has hit a rocky patch lately, and it's getting pretty tense. 
A slew of grievances filed by union members has really ramped up the pressure. Things took a significant turn when Stellantis decided to file a federal lawsuit against the United Auto Workers. They claimed that the union breached their contract by threatening to strike because some investments were postponed. But we need to talk about this in detail, so let's do that now. This legal move came on the heels of a vote at Stellantis' parts distribution facility in Los Angeles, where union members voiced strong dissatisfaction over the company's failure to meet its investment commitments. United Auto Workers President Sean Fain has been vocal in accusing Stellantis of acting in bad faith. He argues that the automaker isn't living up to its promises made in the 2023 labor agreement, which included substantial commitments to pump investments into U.S. production facilities. Let's dig deeper into what's happening. Stellantis Stellantis' inability to follow through on commitments concerning job security and investment in production plans has led to a wave of layoffs, further fueling frustration among workers. The company had promised a hefty $1,500,000,000 investment for the Belvedere, Illinois assembly plant, but due to delays, many workers are feeling increasingly anxious about their futures. As Stellantis struggles with a significant drop in sales and profits, reportedly almost 50% down in the first half of 2024, Layoffs have become a bitter reality for numerous employees. The union points out that Stellantis could have made different choices, such as curbing executive raises instead of resorting to job cuts. This raises a critical question. Could a more thoughtful approach have prevented some of this turmoil? Now, the potential for a national strike is looming large on the horizon. The United Auto Workers is gearing up to hold strike authorization votes across various local unions that represent Stellantis workers. These votes are incredibly important because they give union leaders the power to initiate strikes if negotiations go south. The motivation behind the union's decision to consider strikes is rooted in serious concerns over Stellantis' adherence to the commitments made during the 2023 labor negotiations. Workers have the right to walk out if their agreements are violated, and this is something they're taking seriously. With mounting economic pressures on Stellantis and ongoing grievances from union members, the impact of a strike could be massive, disrupting production lines and aggravating the already fragile financial situation of the automaker. But let's not forget, the labor unrest at Stellantis isn't just a corporate saga, it's about real people and their lives. The personal stories from Jeep workers shed light on the human cost tied to layoffs and the pervasive uncertainty. Many workers are feeling the weight of anxiety when it comes to their job security and the futures of their communities, which often depend heavily on auto manufacturing jobs. For instance, one worker opened up about his fear of losing his home if layoffs become a reality. Another employee highlighted the emotional toll on families as they navigate through financial instability and uncertainty. These narratives remind us that behind all the stats and corporate decision making are actual individuals facing dire circumstances while they fight to secure their livelihoods. As the tensions continue to escalate between Stellantis and the United Auto Workers, both sides find themselves at a critical juncture. There's a delicate balance to strike between corporate interests and the rights and needs of workers, and navigating this complex landscape will require careful thought and action. The stakes are high and the outcome could shape the future of thousands of workers and their communities. But here's where things got complicated. A billion dollar band-aid. This whole thing feels like a scene straight out of a past automotive crisis. It's no surprise then that the recent announcement of a billion dollar federal bailout has caught everyone's attention. This hefty financial package raises big questions about what lies ahead for one of America's most beloved brands. With these challenges looming large, the federal government has stepped in, offering a significant financial lifeline designed to help stabilize Stellantis. This support is especially crucial as the company gears up to protect jobs during a complicated transition to electric vehicles. If you're thinking this situation sounds a bit familiar, you're onto something. This intervention echoes the bailouts we witnessed during the Great Recession, when automakers received critical government backing to stave off disaster. Now, let's dive into what this billion dollar bailout really aims to do. It's not just about keeping Jeep and its sibling brands afloat, it's also about encouraging a shift towards electrification. This transition is vital for staying competitive in an ever-evolving market. 
However, not everyone is convinced that this financial boost is the magic solution. Critics are expressing concerns that it may end up being nothing more than a band-aid fix, addressing short-term cash flow problems while leaving the deeper issues that led to Jeep's troubles untouched. If we take a step back, we can see striking similarities between today's situation and the automotive bailouts of the late 2000s. Back then, both General Motors and Chrysler were in dire straits, and they required significant government assistance to keep their doors open. Those bailouts were seen as essential to prevent mass job losses and prevent deep economic fallout. Ultimately, restructuring efforts enabled those automakers to regain their footing and profitability. But there was a cost. Those bailouts came with major concessions demanded from labor unions and management, reshaping the industry's landscape. Now, the pressing question remains. Will Stellantis and Jeep find themselves in a similar predicament? While history has shown us that previous bailouts have revitalized struggling automakers, they also exposed recurring systemic issues that needed fixing. Issues that, it seems, are still present today. As we watch this story unfold, we're left to ponder, can Stellantis successfully navigate these turbulent times, or will it be forced to confront the same challenges that plagued past automotive giants? It's a gripping scenario that keeps us on the edge of our seats. Bankruptcy or survival? What's happening to Stellantis, the powerhouse behind beloved brands like Jeep, Dodge, and Ram? As sales continue to sink and the company secures a billion dollar federal bailout, the big question on everyone's mind is this. Can Stellantis steer its way to survival or are we looking at the potential for bankruptcy down the line? Taking a look at the current landscape reveals a challenging picture. These shocking figures ring alarm bells, echoing the devastating scenarios that led to the bankruptcies of fellow automakers during the Great Recession. In response to this dire situation, government intervention has arrived, with more than a billion dollars set aside to help Stellantis transition into electric vehicles and stabilize its operations. But the thing is, the root of Stellantis' challenges lies deeper, primarily in its inability to deliver vehicles that are both affordable and appealing to consumers. Let's face it, when models like the Jeep Wrangler start seeing price hikes of over 30%, it creates a disconnect that could alienate potential buyers. This gap between pricing and what consumers are looking for presents serious questions about the long-term viability of Stellantis. Now, when we discuss financial health, the situation becomes a bit of a mixed bag. Sure, Stellantis is grappling with significant problems, but it's important to note that its financial standing today isn't as bleak as it was during previous crises. Unlike back in 2009, when Chrysler was drowning in more liabilities than assets, Stellantis is currently in a better position. Right now, it enjoys positive equity, meaning they have more assets than liabilities. On top of that, with approximately $50 billion in cash reserves, there's a decent buffer against immediate financial distress. This financial cushion offers Stellantis a bit of breathing room to navigate these turbulent times. However, it also raises the crucial point of whether the company can leverage these resources wisely to address the core issues that led them here in the first place, rather than just scrambling to survive in the short term. Another major hurdle on Stellantis's path is a brewing storm in labor relations. The dynamics between the company and the United Auto Workers have taken a turn for the worse, largely due to layoffs and unfulfilled promises regarding job security. In an attempt to cut down on costs, Stellantis has been offering buyouts to white-collar employees, all while preparing for the possibility of strikes among factory workers. The implications of labor unrest on operational stability are significant. Strikes could disrupt production lines, leading to even greater financial losses and potentially setting Stellantis on a downward spiral that's tough to bounce back from. Keeping a motivated workforce is essential for any successful turnaround strategy, but the rising tensions are likely to take a toll on employee morales, affecting productivity at all levels. On top of this, transitioning to electrification is a complex undertaking filled with uncertainty. The company must not only ensure that new models meet evolving regulatory standards, but also convince discerning buyers who are more selective about price and quality. If Stellantis can't adapt quickly to these shifting sands, they risk losing valuable market share to competitors competitors who are nimbler and more in tune with consumer desires. With all these challenges from multiple fronts, it's quite the juggling act for Stellantis. The stakes are high and the future is uncertain. How will they rise to the occasion? But what's your thoughts on this? Let's know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video.